Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. We got to talk about the rap girls. Once again, the rap girls are fighting. It's a bunch of drama online. I did the video earlier. Um, Today, I hope most of you guys got a chance to watch it. I did a whole breakdown on everything with Nicki Minaj and Lotto and what happened yesterday. <clears throat> now, let me say this because I, what I've noticed a lot of like just things, just, just being an observer of like the female rap industry over the past few years. And this is somebody who has watched Nicki come into the game. And, you know, I, I've been a fan of Nikki in different parts, right? Especially in the beginning, because up until then, we hadn't really had a whole lot of female rappers that were still doing it big. Yes, we had the Little Kims. We had the Foxy Browns. But I think when Nikki came in, she came in at a space where we needed a new rap girl. You know what I'm saying? Every era needs that rap girl, right? Just like in the 80s, we had like, or maybe early 90s, I'm sorry, I said 80s. Maybe the early 90s, we had like Queen Latifah, MC Light, you know what I mean? So then by the time the late 90s came and we had the Little Kims, the Foxy Browns, the Eves, Trina, things like that. And so Nicki Minaj was that girl for like, you know, the next generation. And um, to me, she could definitely rap. She had like just a lot of like really dope bars. You know, she was doing her thing, but I just noticed like just like the constant issue with her and Little Kim. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but it just always seemed to be this young versus old situation with Little Kim. So now we fast forward to like the new modern rap girls, right? We got the Cardi B's, we got the Lottos, um, Malibu Mitch, um, Akbar. You know, just a bunch of rap girls, right? And so you have Nikki, you know, working with certain people. You have certain people who sign more with Cardi. But I feel like there's been such a divide in this industry, especially with the female rap industry. And I feel like a lot of that drama has come from Nicki Minaj's side. I just feel that way. This is not about, and you can call, don't, don't call me no hater. This is just me being honest. Because I feel like, as you get older, you have to support the next generation. Otherwise, you look like just like a bitter Betty. I just don't understand like the constant beefing with like the younger girls. Case in point, when Cardi was up for a Grammy, I remember there was a lot of talk back then. A lot of people were, were mad and upset. They were saying she's too new. She hasn't put in enough work. It was all about payola. There were all these conspiracies to why this girl was up for a Grammy. Okay. And remember when she was up for a Grammy, the Grammys don't matter. Um, it, it does. A Grammy doesn't equate talent. A Grammy doesn't equate writing and bars. Even though Bodak Yellow did really well, Cardi B's whole album did really well. It's like she was not deserving to Nikki and a lot of her fans of getting a Grammy. And a Grammy didn't matter and who cares? Uh, Nikki's the queen of rap, she writes her own raps. It was all this disparaging stuff. And this is just me keeping it real on the outside looking in. Then when, when Meg Thee Stallion, AKA Bigfoot, as Nikki called her in that message with Lotto, you know, when Meg Thee Stallion came out and she was nominated for a Grammy, what was everybody saying? sympathy. It was because Tory Lanez shot her in the hoof. It was because, you know what I'm saying, all this drama with Tory Lanez. Everybody has something to say, and most of the people were not saying something positive. It wasn't because she's talented. It wasn't because Meg Thee Stallion can rap too. It was all of these conspiracies. So now what I find very, I know I said hoof child, y'all know them damn uh, horse jokes, honey. I, I can't just, I can't stay away from the horse jokes. <laughs> but um, now that we're going into the 2023 season, I see Nicki Minaj like super excited now to be, you know, submitted for this 
Grammy, you know, category. You know, she wants to be submitted because Super Freaky Girl's doing good on the charts. She hasn't had a song hit the charts, you know, number one and been up there for, you know, as long as it's been up there in a while. Okay. This is something more new. Now, in the past, Nikki was always on the charts, always on the charts, always doing it big. Then she, you know, she took a break, a hiatus, whatever. So now this is kind of like a comeback. So what I find very interesting about this is that the Grammys took her out of the hip hop category and they moved her over to the pop category. And Nikki was calling that out. And you know what? I agree with Nikki. And I think the majority of the internet, honestly, regardless if you're a Nikki fan or not, agreed with Nikki. If you're going to do it for one, you have to do it for, uh, for the other. Like I always say, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Don't tell me that I'm wrong for doing something, but then these people can do it too. And we see that all the time on YouTube. Well, white YouTubers, they get away with murder. They can come on here and be topless and, and do backflips and cuss everybody out. Video won't be demonetized. They won't be banned. A black person comes on here and just speaks truth to power. Oh, you're preaching black supremacy. You got to go. So we see it all the time where it's okay for one and not the other. So Lotto's song is definitely pop. I don't consider Big Energy like this hardcore rap album. I didn't even understand why she won you know, rapper of the year, you know, like rap album of the year, whatever she won for BT. Because I don't look at that as like a hardcore rap song. But again, I don't control, you know, any of these nominations or wins. I was happy that she did win something, but I don't know she should have won it for that particular song. So now even Lotto herself has admitted that she kind of crossed over to go do the pop thing because the pop thing tends to get pushed more in the mainstream, right? That's why I believe Doja Cat is pushed way more because she's more or less always put in like more pop category. Every now and then they'll try and put her in hip hop, but what she does is considered a bit more popish. And pop is just more mainstream. Let's just keep it real. So I think that's why Lotto kind of moved over that way with that song. So even if Lotto is out here tweeting that the song is more pop, I don't think Nicki was wrong for saying, well, hey, why am I the only one being put in this category? I think I don't think that she really needed to say Lotto's name because sometimes you don't have to say anything. It, it should just be obvious, right? If we have Super Freaky Girl and they're saying that that sounds popish and clearly Lotto's in there, People are going to know who you're talking about. People are going to ride for you anyways. Your peoples are going to call out Lotto. So I think when she kind of put Lotto's name in it, it almost came off like childish. Remember like back in the day, like let's say, you know, something goes on in the classroom. Let's say the teacher walks out and all the kids are acting a fool. And the teacher comes in and she catches that one kid and she's like, you're going to the principal's office. You weren't listening while I was gone. Then the kid is like, wait, 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 but, but T was doing stuff too. And such and such was throwing pencils and so, La -uh, uh -uh. go take your, you know, you got caught. Just go take your little, you know, punishment. Don't come dragging us all in it. That's how it kind of came off because we all knew who she was talking about. So you know, I can see like, you know, why I mentioned her name, especially after Lotto said they left off on a bad note. OK, so now on top of all that going on with these two, you know, with Nicki Minaj stayed in her opinion, talking about it. Then Lotto came out and basically said that, you know. Because I think she DM'd her first, she DM'd her first. And was basically trying to talk to her in the DMs and saying, I agree with you, but why are you bringing my name in it? And then that is when Nikki decided to post a private conversation. OK, so Nikki took it there because it wasn't public at first. Nikki posted it and said, you know, why isn't she showing me support publicly? Why isn't she supporting another, another black woman when she knows this is wrong? And then at that point, that is the spark that lit all of this drama that happened. Now, I will say this. I feel like there's a lot of frustration and anger, you know what I'm saying, that Nikki has towards this new generation of girls. I've always had the feeling that Nikki does prefer to be the only one. And that's okay, you know what I'm saying? If that's just what you prefer, that's what you prefer. 
I think she's in a situation where she feels like she's having to collab with these girls to kind of stay, you know, with like the younger people because she's older now. She's she's older. And so she kind of has to stay in line with the younger people. Like I felt no type of genuine connection with her and the and Cora LeRae. I never understood that collaboration at all. It never made sense to me. And then fast forward now, they're beefing and, and you know, Coyle Ray's olive oil. I think Nikki likes for people to like really worship the ground that she works on and constantly pay homage and things like that. And one thing I can say is that Lotto has done that. But let me be real. I don't think it's necessarily coming from a genuine place. When you're constantly screaming, I'm the queen. I'm that girl. Y'all need to pay me homage. Y'all need to show me love. What ends up happening is that, yeah, you'll have a segment of the population and these female rappers who actually, you know, who do like you, but you'll have more of a section, segment, excuse me, of females plotting. They're not necessarily there because they like you. They want to rub shoulders with you to get into certain spaces. Perfect example, Meg the Stallion. Remember, oh, Nikki's my idol. I look up to Nikki, 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 Nikki. And we write our songs. Remember, she was throwing shade at Cardi. And I didn't respect Meg for that. I'm going to always stand on that. Be cool with who you want to be cool with. If you like Nikki and you're a fan of Nikki, that's great. But you don't have to shade another female because you're rocking with this one. Because Cardi never told you to pick a side. So... You know, Nikki did the song with Meg. They were kiki and they had matching, you know, hair color weave and all this stuff. Only for Meg to use Nikki and her fans for what she needed and move right on to the next one. And then got with Cardi and used Barty Gang for what she needed. You know, WAP went super successful, performed at the Grammys. So Meg played that game. And that's the problem. And I think that Meg's situation left a bad taste in Nikki's mouth. Hence why she's Connor Bigfoot in the DMs, right? Then on top of that, you had this situation with Coyle Ray. You know, she worked with Coyle Ray. Coyle Ray, from what I'm hearing, felt like Nikki used her, um, I guess. And she felt like Nikki used her to promote the next project that she was working on because it was so close to Blick Blick. Like I said, I never understood the Coyle Ray collaboration because Coyle Ray is not a lyricist like that. I love her personality. I love the fact that she's a skinny mini girl and she's confident in her body and she's all natural and she's just confident with who she is. I love that about Coyle Ray. Twin and them, that's my song. But as far as them collaborating, it, to me, it, it just, it, it didn't even make any sense. I was always thinking to myself, why is she not collaborating with Lotto? They both can rap. They both look a lot alike. They're shaped alike. You know what I'm saying? That would be a dope feature. But I think for her, she was feeling a way about Lotto. I don't think she feels that Lotto's love or, you know, the constant mention of her name was really sincere. And I think Nikki right now is really trying to be careful with the people that she extends herself to. And I also feel like she feels a way, honestly, because Lotto was in WAP with two of her sworn enemies, Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B. Remember, Lotto was in there. She didn't have a verse, but she was in there in lingerie, you know, switching her ass and, you know, dropping it like it's hot. I think that has made Nikki be like, okay, I'll deal with the public love, but I don't know how I want to handle you because. You was over here kicking and being cool with Cardi and Meg. I really think that's where her issue really is, why she hasn't embraced Lotto fully. Because Coyle Ray has never done anything with Cardi. They've never connected or anything like that. And most of the girls that Nikki is with have not co connected or had any type of connection to Cardi. And so I think she's being very, very strategic. Now, I will also say this. When you're constantly wanting praise and, you know, accolades and people to worship you, it does breed fake love. You know, like I said before, it breeds fake love. And I believe that Lotto's actions, once Nikki turned her down for a feature, 
it bothered Lotto because Lotto has the right to say, you know, how she feels and, you know, clap back at Nikki in this instance with the Grammy situation. But we're not going to act like she was innocent either. All of these girls throw subliminals, including Cardi. OK, y'all not keep it real over here. They, they have all been guilty of throwing subliminals. All of them. City Girls, Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion, Nicki. That's the one thing about these female rappers until yesterday. They rarely add each other. It's just a bunch of subliminal, subliminal bullshit. Then you got to, you know, put on your magnifying glass and search Twitter and connect the dots and all this weird shit. Where's the male rappers be like, I don't like Meat Mill. Fuck him. And Adam. The girls don't do that. They just send subliminals all day. And Lotto has sent subliminals. You know, she, she shaded Nikki for not working with her. Let's keep that real. But Nikki has also taken interviews that Lotto has said personally. When Lotto was saying that she's glad that, you know, Nikki's not the only female, that now there's a plethora of women in rap. I don't think she was wrong for that. You know, because me, I for one am glad that it's not only Nikki. I'm glad that it's a lot of other women now. I'm really liking Glorilla's new album. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that we're able to hear from other rappers from around the country and that it's just not one. And I'm not saying that it was only one rapper when Nicki was out, but let's keep it real. She was the main mainstream rapper that everyone talked about, that everyone gravitated towards. No, if you were out during that Nicki Minaj era, most people were not checking for other female rappers around that era. That's how powerful Nicki Minaj was. And I think that that's what Lotto was trying to say. But Nicki took it as shade, like you're dissing me and you're trying to compare yourself to me. Let me keep this real. Outside of looks and body, Lotto does not compare to Nicki Minaj music wise, uh, album wise, album sales. And I think that's the problem with some of these new rap girls that are coming in the scene. They want things handed to them. You know what I mean? They're, they're expecting certain things. They're thinking because I have a big following and I'm verified on Twitter and I'm verified on Instagram, that should allow me into certain spaces. A lot of people don't pay dues anymore. And that's the issue. A lot of these girls are coming into the game and they're wanting collaborations right off the bat. They're wanting features. They're wanting to be in people's music videos. They have all these expectations and entitlements. Don't nobody owe you shit. I come from a generation when we bought CDs, there might be one feature on that bitch, if that. Now you, there's times you'll get an album from somebody, there's a feature on every damn song. Can we actually hear what you can do by yourself? Why does everybody need a feature? Why do you need a co-signer? I do YouTube by myself. I don't need co-signers. I got that good credit. Like, why do we never get some of that? Why are these girls not coming into the game being confident in who they are and being confident in their ability? Why is everything, I want to collab with Nikki. I want to feature with Nikki. I got to be on Nikki's track. It's not because they really like her. It's because they know it's a good look and that's a stamp. That's what Meg Thee Stallion did. She knew that was a good look. They know Nikki's fan base is crazy as hell. Whoever's Nikki's rocking with, they're going to rock with them. So a lot of these girls know what they're doing. My thing is, if you're a true artist, you shouldn't have to beg nobody for a feature. You should be so hot that people are knocking on your door and asking you. The OG should be asking to feature with you. That's how you do that. See, when Cardi came in the game, she wasn't out here begging Nikki for features. She wasn't out here trying to work with all these different people. She was already doing her thing. And I think that's the problem. Because that's what was bothering Nikki. Nikki felt like there wasn't enough homage being paid and everything else. And Cardi's like, I have paid you homage. I told you I'm a big fan. I'm just not going to suck your peen. I'm not doing that. Whereas these other, you know, rap girls, they've done that. It's just been this constant, oh, all praises due to Nikki. All praises due to Allah for Nikki. You know, it's like, what the hell? You know what I mean? And I think she's starting to see through that. And I think she's tired of it. But I just think like this entire situation, is crazy, like just the constant back and forth. So I want to also talk about the whole age thing. Nikki feels like Lotto's coming at her age. 
which I just find incredibly funny. And right, I was trying to see if it was still trending, but all day, Freaky Grandma's been trending. Um, you know, Lotto said, you're as old as my mom. I don't think that's ageism. I think that's Lotto spitting facts. Nicki Minaj is definitely old enough to be her mom. Now, I didn't know Lotto was only 23. Lotto looks a lot older than her age. And again, most of these girls in this generation do. Y'all wear all that heavy makeup, heavy weave. A lot of y'all do look a lot older. I thought Lotto was like 28. Okay, but she's 23, right? Lotto is technically young enough to be Nicki Minaj's child. Why? Because I have a soon-to-be 22-year-old. Lotto's damn near young enough to be my child. And that's the thing. When somebody's that young, I'm not arguing with people in their early 20s. I've told y'all that before. I don't argue with people born in the 2000s or later because y'all be talking like y'all know everything and y'all just got here. So I'm not going back and forth with a bunch of 2000s babies. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with being older. Of course, I always tell people to embrace that, but I don't think she was age shaming. But when you're turning around and saying that she looks old and, oh, well, I thought you were 35, that's age shaming. Because now you're shaming her for her look and saying that you thought she was 35 years old. You knew damn well that girl, she don't look that damn old, you know. But I feel like Nikki is very upset about that because that's what a lot of people are saying. That you're old, you're grandma, you need to retire, you're 40. Because again, it's like once you hit over the age of 30, people just discard you. It's almost like, you know, you should just be banished and not heard from again. And ageism is real, but I don't think what Lotto said was ageism. She was stating facts. You are old enough to be her mother. You're probably older than her mother. Her mother's 39. I think Nikki's either 39 or 40. Don't know. And even P. Diddy was saying this not too long ago on The Breakfast Club. And what I found interesting is he had the nerve to be crying about ageism. I don't like when people come up to me and they be like, hey, unk, I feel like they're trying to talk about my age. I might be 58 or however the hell old he is, but I look damn good for my age. You know, ageism is real in hip hop. And to me, I thought to myself, Diddy, shut the hell up. Women have been talking about ageism forever. And most men don't acknowledge it, especially in hip hop. And my thing is, it's funny that now that it's happening to these older male rappers, now they want to have a conversation about ageism. But when females are like, hey, I can't even get a role because I'm over the age of 35, or I can't play certain roles now once I hit my 40s, but you know, Robert De Niro and all these older actors, they're always seen as sexy as they get older. So ageism has been a conversation. And if you're so concerned about ageism, have y'all ever seen Diddy with somebody his age outside of Kim Porter? In recent years. No, you're running after 28-year-old Carisha. So you can't sit there and cry about ageism, but you don't even date women your own age. And Carisha's grown. Like, like I told you, I've never had an issue with her and Diddy dating, fucking whatever they do. That is their business. She's a grown woman. But you can't cry ageism and you don't even talk to women your own age. You know what I mean? So I, I hear a lot of this conversation happening in hip-hop, but it's very interesting now that the, the hip-hop you know, gatekeepers are getting older, like the Jay-Z's, the Diddy's, and others. Now it's all, you know, people are trying to call us unk, and people are trying to count us out because we're older. Well, yeah, because at what point are y'all going to let the new generation shine? You know what I'm saying? So I, I think, like, ageism is a real thing, but I don't think Lotto's situation was ageism. Now, on top of all of that, it's hard for me to have a whole lot of sympathy when it comes to the whole ageism thing for Nicki Minaj. Because let's keep it real, I keep thinking back to all the stuff that went down between her and Little Kim and how she treated Little Kim and the issues that they had. And I'm not saying that Little Kim was 100% innocent. I'm not saying that because like I said, all these female rappers, they sub each other in songs on social media and that stuff. But remember, this is the same girl that was like, you know, uh, I hear the mumbling, I hear the crackling, you know, like talking about little Kim being old, hang it up, flat screen. So it's very interesting that the same energy that she was putting out 10, 15 years ago is the same energy that she's now receiving from a lot of these younger girls. Like I'm that new girl, make way. Or you're just mad because you know, you're older. 
Let me take y'all back to some of the conversations that were happening a few years ago. And it's very interesting how all of this right now is what Nikki's going through in current day, in this current date and time. And this is why you have to watch how you treat people, the type of energy that you put out there. You, you have to treat people who come before you with genuine, okay, respect. And I'm not saying like just a quick shout out or that's my fave. Genuine respect, love, and admiration. Why? Because these people paved the way for you to be able to eat and, and live a good life. Because many of the hip hop entrepreneurs who came before the Nicki Minaj's, the Little Wayne's, the Drake's, a lot of them are not living that trife life. A lot of those pioneers are struggling. They didn't, they, there was no money for them to make. So let me go ahead and play these videos. Give me just a second here. Okay, here we go. Let's just be real. She took the first shots. It's always been like that. It's so deep. I, I mean, like I said, when I put the documentary together, people will more understand. But it's like she's been throwing shots and still throwing shots. I think her shots, are, her shots are more subtle, and you will be very direct and say, "Yes, that's who I'm talking about, and that's what it's about." And Nikki would be like, "No, I'm not talking." Yeah, about her because child. yes, exactly right. You know what I mean? And so I'm not gonna play these games. I'm gonna get straight to the money. I'm not gonna sit there and let you spin people and spin around. Come on, everybody who is in into hip hop, into music. Everybody know what it is. Mm -hmm. Let's just be real. I thought it had yeah. something to do with, with, with Fendi as well. Cause you know. Let's just be She was always throwing shots. I don't know what you're talking about. I've you never need heard to go You need, because you're not I, trying to I used to, to hear her pay it. homage like she said. Sweetie, she said, I love Kim. I love Fendi. You're not Fox trying Street. to do your homework. That's why. Boo boo. You got to do your homework. If you go on all of those, sit those little, to come up DVD even with Fendi. Fendi would even say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because, you know, she was just a real cocky type of girl or whatever. She just, she always wanted to be like you. She always wanted to be, and she would have said, I'm going to take her spot. I Let me tell you something, how I know. Full Force had her, Full Force's son had her first. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They had her first. When I did the song on my album, You Can't with Queen B, you know that song? I don't know if you know, but anyway, when I did that song on my album, that's full force singing that song. Mm -hmm. That They did that song. She was in the studio then, and they said, she was basically hating on me then, but loving me at the same time. Okay, fine. Now, after that whole cash money situation with the song, we're at Justin's birthday party. Perfect timing to come up and say, hey, you know, we did the song together. Whoa, 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 whoa. nothing and she looked at me and rolled her eyes and i was like really every single record she's made was coming at me i don't care what you say i don't care what you say i don't care what, you say, what nobody said everybody who's smart with a brain everybody who knows music knows damn well in that puffy record she was coming at me i didn't say nothing about this chick I say nothing about this chick at this time. With a, she was coming at me in, that puffy, in the Puffy record. She was coming at me in all, in all these records that she was doing. The, the Jay and Kanye rest. I, I didn't say nothing. So what is all... I don't understand where all this is coming. How come when male rap was like... You not like her. She wanted to be the only female out there. So when Baby and them said, we're not fucking with this chick because you can't stand next to her, she loved it. Because she didn't want to stand next to me. I think it's her. She wanted to be out there by herself. I think the energy puts is, women against each other all yeah, the time. Yeah, they though. do. That's exactly I mean, what it, happened. It, and my thing is, you have to be smart enough to say, yo, I don't know what they talking about, but you my bitch. Don't start coming at me in records, talking to me, just talking about me disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Indirectly. Don't do that. Don't do that. At the end of the day, she should have just said, I don't care, you my bitch. Yo, I want to still do other things with you. Let's just do it. Forget about what this because I think for women day, it's harder because they do make it seem like you're gonna go down in history now as a sore loser, as opposed to going down in history as the queen. Because when you, if you can't beat them, join them. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. You don't have to feel the need to put somebody down and make yourself feel better. I see people do things all the time that I think, hmm, that remind me of Nicki Minaj. But it's like, 
do you, honey? It's like we all take from each other. It's there's nothing. That's why I, you know, I did a record on um, Pink Friday called Here I Am, and as I said, like nothing is new under the sun. You know, when you see Gaga, you see Madonna. But I don't. But Madonna never hated on Gaga. Why in the black communities we gotta hate on each other instead of saying thank you for showing me love, thank you for you know, like keeping my name alive. You know, the same way, the same way she opened doors for me, I'm now opening doors for her. Because do you understand what I'm saying? Because nobody was even playing your music, and you damn sure couldn't get an interview to save your life. But now you get interviews, and every time you do an interview, they asking you about Nicki Minaj. So it's like we can we we help each other. You know that's the point. We're helping each other. But if you are bitter, get a life. Don't play with me. You know because I respect you. I love you. I've said it in every interview, time and time again. And if that's not good enough for you, Mama. Then it's something deep rooted in you. You need to get your something is bothering. You. And then when you coming in the game, you don't come in the game disrespecting your idols. You don't be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm the new. You sit down, I'm the new. No, I, c I couldn't say. Why would I say that to Salt and Pepper? Like, I'm I'm the new such and such. You sit down. You had you know you done. You had why why would I say that to Salt and Pepper? Why would I say that to MC Light? Why would I say that? These are the girls that made it possible for me. These are the girls that influenced me and gave me life. You know what I mean? It's just, that's just, you don't come in the industry like that. And a lot of these girls come in the industry like that. It's whack. Yeah. It's whack. You know? And it always catches up to you later. Karma is a mother, so. I do want to say is, you know, my, in a perfect world, I would like to see everybody, you know, come together. And get along. Yeah. Uh, that don't always be the case, but it's simple. It's simple as one, two, three. It's a respect. You don't have to like somebody, but just you can respect what they doing and what they've done. And that's it. You know, it's it's so simple. Everybody try to make it seem like it's this big thing. It's just simple. Let's just respect each other. It, when I say respect too, it's a respect of in doing this for two decades. That's hard. That's extremely hard. That's that's not something, you know, it's not about how quick you build a house, it's how long that house can stand. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful what we teach, you know, the generation about because it was a time when I came up when if you was if you've been in the game for 10 years strong, you was a legend. Not, yep. you know, you're irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And we I never looked at James Brown, right. like you are irrelevant Relevant. when Michael Jackson came along. Right. I never That's looked at right. Tina Turner like you don't mean nothing because Beyonce is here. Like these people have built a foundation and not just people of my era, but people of the era before me, the lights, the Latifas, the 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 salt and peppers, the rock sand chantes. So it's just we just have to respect each other and you know, then be helpful to the ones that's coming so we can teach them because what will happen is they will get to a place where they're 10 years of God willing, they'll get to a place where they're 10, 15 years in the game. Mm -hmm. And you don't want the next person behind you to come and discredit any of your accolades. Right. And I'm sorry if I'm getting emotional, but that's it's because, you know, we work very hard and, and I see so many people work hard and I just, I want to bring everybody together. Yeah. All right, y'all. Let me come back on the screen. So y'all just heard what Missy said with Little Kim. Y'all know I keep receipts. So that's why I said for me, it's very hard for me to have like all this undue sympathy for Nikki because when she came in the game, it was she she caused a big divide in female hip hop. She really did. I mean, you hear Missy Elliott getting emotional. You know, it's like this huge divide. You know, with like little Kim and Nikki and oh, it's because she's old and bitter. You weren't getting interviews unless you're talking about me. And so it's very interesting how things come full circle. That's why I say you have to watch the energy that you put out there, because now these young girls who are half of Nikki's age, just like how Nikki was half a little Kim's age when she came out are now giving her that same treatment. And they're feeling like, well, I, you know, I'll give her props, but I don't have to do all that extra stuff. 
And even now, Nikki does a lot of things behind the scenes. Explain to me what was her reason for unfollowing Normani. Why? Because Normani did that song with Cardi B. Even before all this drama, she had followed, uh, she had unfollowed Lotto. You know, so it's just like, it's just like this constant thing that she does at times. And it's just not a good look. If you're going to help and really connect with these young up and coming girls, then just do that. Now she's beefing with Koi LeRae. Why is that? I've even seen Barb's talking mess about Doja Cat. And I've asked the Barb's I'm cool with, what is y'all's issue with Doja? Why is she now being called Doja Rat? Why is that her name from, by some of these Barb's? And the only thing I can think of is because her numbers are, you know, she's always on the billboard. She's surpassing Nikki. Because why would she be called Doja Rat when she allowed Nikki to get onto her song? And Nikki even admitted in that conversation with Big Lotto that I wait, you know, for females, you know, for y'all's music to like be going somewhere to be charting before I jump on the remix. But does she have that same attitude towards the men? Does she wait for their songs to be hot and charting before she jumps on their songs and collaborates with them? You know, I feel like it's a way where I'll help, but I really don't want to help. I'm just doing this now because it's the wave. Because Cardi B honestly has set a precedent with working with so many female rappers, ones who've come before her and the new girls coming up. She has collaborated with a lot of females. Even after Meg Thee Stallion dissed her with Nicki Minaj, she still was humble enough to say, you know what? I forgive you. Let's just get this money. Look at City Girls, what they're doing now. It was cool when Cardi was collaborating with them and, you know, helping them out and giving them advice and really, you know, promoting and pushing them. But now that they're with Nikki, now there's like this back and forth. It's almost like once you're over there with her, you have to pick or choose. You can't be cool with both. And that is so toxic because there's room for all of these females. We shouldn't have to pick. We didn't need to pick between Little Kim or Nikki. And at that point, because the narrative was being spun that, you know, Little Kim was bitter, she's hating on this young, hot female, most people sided with Nicki Minaj because it looked at like, you know, dang, Little Kim, you haven't been hot in a while. It seems like you are kind of, you know, not wanting to support her. But now, after a while, when you're the constant common de denominator over the years, people have to look at that. Normani's one of the sweetest girls. I've watched Nicki Minaj shout Normani out on stage. What was the unfollow for? I don't think anybody should have to pick, you know what I'm saying? If I'm cool with Nikki, I can only be cool with Nikki. Or if I'm cool with Cardi, I can only be cool with Cardi. People have to be able to just move around freely. And it's just made it where there's just all this drama and female rap. And it's really, really sad. I mean, it's crazy. Even the Remy Ma beef, somebody just brought that up. Even the whole thing with Remy Ma. Even that whole back and forth you know, made people pick sides. And it's just very interesting, like I said, with all of those clips that I just showed y'all, everything that Nikki was saying back then about Little Kim can be applied to her right now in 2022. You're literally beefing with somebody half your age, just like Little Kim was supposedly beefing with somebody half her age. Again, if the Grammys were not a big deal in 2018 when Cardi was up for a Grammy, in 2020 when Meg was up for a Grammy, if they were not a big deal and it was just, you know, uh, payola and sympathy and all this stuff that was being said and, oh, that's the white man's validation, who cares? Why is it so important now? I just find that very interesting. Why does it matter now? If the Grammys are irrelevant and they, they pick favorites and they pick girls who haven't been in the game long enough, why submit your music? You're submitting it because you do care about getting a Grammy. You feel like you've been in the game so long. That is the main accolade, accolade for anybody in the music industry. And that's okay. It's okay to say, you know what? I do want a Grammy. It shouldn't be a situation where there's constant shade every time another female's up for something. It doesn't matter. The goalpost gets moved whenever it's another female. But then once it's them, now the goalpost gets pushed back. And now it's, you know, oh, I need to be, why did they move me out this category? This is messed up. This is not fair. 
But just three years ago, you know, the Grammy was was a fraud and it was all these conspiracies as to why she hadn't gotten one. It was beef with people on the Grammy board and all this stuff. But again, if it's a racist institution, why even submit? It's okay to be honest and say, you know what? I want my accolades. I want my rewards. But while I'm working hard to get that, I'm not going to knock another female for getting theirs. It is not that serious. But that's what it seems to always happen. And I just, I think it's sad. Because when you're a queen, you don't have to keep telling somebody that you're a queen. You just walk as a queen. You carry yourself as a queen. And you understand that can't nobody dethrone you or make you feel, you know what I'm saying, self-conscious or insecure about your throne because you built your own lane. Let's keep it real. None of these girls, I don't think personally, maybe Meg could give, give her a run for her money. But even then, I don't know. Nikki can wrap circles around all of these females. I don't think anybody can take that away from Nikki. Nikki can spit. When she gets on the mic, it's going to be a bop. Her verse is going to be a bop, period. So my thing is, why are you so pressed? Why are you so bothered by the next generation? Especially when you know how it feels because you claim that little Kim was doing it to you. And now you're doing what supposedly little Kim was doing to you onto this next generation of girls. And it's not a good look. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.